Hello and welcome to another Love Rugby League Weekly. As always, I'm Dave Parkinson. Yes, I don't change. And neither does the fella next to me. It's Mr Drew Darvish. How the heck are you, Drew? Very good, Dave. It's been a, a very, very interesting weekend of Rugby League, hasn't it? It's, uh, especially in the qualifiers. Uh, yeah, the, I can't believe the dump in the qualifiers. It was just a, one of those weekends where this is why we wanted it in the first place. Yeah, it was very entertaining, wasn't it? And there were a couple of really good results. Uh, probably London, the pick of the bunch, really. That was a great result, wasn't it? 11-8. 11-8 at home. The, the Capitals are fortress for the Broncos uh, this season. Brilliant result. because Lee's won, though. Because Sulphur Red Devils were, were really good, weren't they? Uh, well, have been really good in the, in the qualifiers, but... But London blew them away. I know a lot of people are saying, and, and cue the buzzer, because Dave, Dave always mentions it. Hashtag they, Jackson Hastings. They didn't have Jackson Hastings for the second game in a row, and they lost the second game in a row. I'm not saying they are a one-man team, but they cer he certainly has a big impact on them. Um, I mean, they've also announced that Joey Lussick's stopping a little bit longer now, haven't they? So that, that's like great news for, for them, because I also think he's sort of tightened them up. Yeah, v very good news, especially while Logan Tompkins has been injured as well for Salford, because they have been a little bit short in the hooker role. So I think it, the sign of Lussick for, for, for next year is it can only be a good thing. Him interchanging with Logan Tompkins next year, as well as having Wood. Uh, it's uh, it's looking bright for for Salford, but taking off and away from London. Wow, what what a result they could, could, could can they get promoted? Dave, who knows? Who knows? Can they make the million? It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Brilliant if they could. And it'd be very interesting to to see where the results go this weekend and where the million pound game will be staged uh, this year. That's the gist of what we're talking about. So we jump straight into the qualifiers like we normally do. So we'll have a little bit more of that. Um, Someone sent us something, didn't they? In fact, I think it was my old mocker, Adrian, about being at two-hour games mm. and games taking two hours to complete when really... Only when they're televised. You're only on telly for 40 mm. minutes each half, aren't you? You are. Yeah, it's... I think this has been the case for, for a couple of years now, hasn't it? Dave? Well, this is why they moved it forward, because people were missing deadlines and stuff, weren't they? Not, not getting the coverage. Yeah, especially for like the, the national newspapers. Then, and when it, when it was 8 o'clock kickoffs rather than quarter to 8, what it is uh, this season, they, they were missing deadlines, and then obviously Rugby League weren't getting any coverage in the media, in the mainstream media, should we say. You always get it on loverrugbyleague.com, but in the mainstream media, you wasn't you wasn't getting uh, any, any coverage. So that's why it went earlier but it's still getting a little bit ridiculous isn't it I, 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 Two hours. I remember half past seven kickoffs though do you reckon that we should cut to that <laughs> I, I, personally I wouldn't mind it, it depends what the fans want because it's the fans who, who obviously work on a, on a Friday hang on hang on the fans are always the last to be thought in all of this we talked about it last week yeah, didn't we, we did. uh, with uh, yeah, the yeah. supporters direct and certain to be fair, I don't, wanting I don't, to get involved I don't, I don't think 15 minutes half an hour would do too much Right. Okay. I don't. I don't think it'd affect the game and the sport too much, really. I don't think it'd, it'd really affect attendances. Um, so I won't mind it going to half seven. But it's. It's. I don't think it's the times of kickoffs anyway, Dave. I think yeah. the fact it, it is the the two hours and and obviously when I'm not I'm not bagging referees. I, I, I don't like to do that. But obviously when there's so many decisions go up to up, up to the video referee nowadays, Dave. I think. Uh, that doesn't help, and when, especially when you're, you're looking at tries uh, or attempts seven, eight, nine times. Sometimes you can be you can be watching a try on the video video referee screen for three or four minutes. So, and that can happen a couple of times in a game. Then, obviously, the half times are always a little bit longer when when the games are televised uh, due to the, the ad breaks and all that. And then sometimes the, the players are on the field, both sets of players are, They're ready, are, want, are they? wanting to kick off, and then Sky just like. Hold on a minute. It's that, well, well, it's that well, mum with his finger into where he sort of. He's, he, I reckon he was a cricket umpire, you know, <laughs> wait, in a previous life. Just, just wait, wait, wait for the adverts to go off and so, so the game can be started. We can't do this. The Andrex puppy's still running about. But uh, to, to be fair, that happens in football. I was at right, okay. Athletic, the uh, Bristol City last Friday, and that were on Sky. And uh, the players were both out. Both I, bet, I bet that were a chore, wouldn't it? <laughs> football on a Friday night, Bristol like City. But uh, good, good win for Latics. But anyway, uh, both sets of players were out on the field, and, and even they were waiting for, for Sky to, to let them know when to kick off. But I just think it's a video referee more than anything, isn't it? Uh, well, my opinion is scrap it. We don't need them. 
Listen, if they don't have him I'd in Toronto... Tempted. I'd be tempted to go that way because I just... You either have, have video refs at every game mm -hmm. or you don't have them at any at all. And I know people are saying, oh, um, the, the reason video referees aren't in, aren't in the championship is be, uh, for certain championship televised games, like uh, the Summer Bash. Um, people were saying uh, that, well, it'd be unfair on rest at championship, but, well... Isn't it unfair on rest of Super League when there's yeah. three games on in a, or two games a weekend and, and they have the video ref and, and none of the others do? And I think the video referee, I think the, the amount of abuse what we see to referees nowadays is, is a lot down to the video referee because there's a lot of different angles and there's a lot mm. of debate and the video referee sparks the, the, the debate, doesn't it? It the, does. The decisions when you, you're looking at it closely and, you, and it's millimetres like, look at... Um, Bryson Goodwin's attempt for Warrington uh, last weekend, where it was right in the corner. You, you go, it was a, the flip of a coin, wasn't it? And, and you I don't think he got it. I'll be honest. Well, it, I've been seeing it a few times. Well, I, I don't. But but that's what it does, really. It's, it, the, the try didn't really matter in the end, but and I think it was it's, the video referee brings on a lot of the, the abuse to referees, in, in my opinion. Okay, now we touched on that for a reason because last week uh, me and Drew rambled on for 90 minutes. Football game. It was, yeah. Well, 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 what we were doing, we were going into the extra time and the end of a rugby league match, weren't we? So, we're, we're going to ensure this. Now, I've been listening to stuff that Robert Elston's been saying. Now, he's, he sees the uh, the Australian game as the pantheon of our sport. He, he, he likes things like the shot clock and various other things. So, we've got our own shot clock. I'm going to get it started because what we're going to move on to now is discussing these qualifiers. Um, so, basically, we're going to get just five minutes talking about each competition. Cool. Um, like a bit of a countdown. Can we, can, can we edit a countdown clock on? What, and sort of have it in the corner? <laughs> oh, you're just asking for more editing stuff. We're just like, hang on. My budget doesn't stretch this far. I'm not Spielberg, you know. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> let us get underway. So... We started off with the Super 8s qualifiers, as you mentioned, great result for London Broncos. Let's just sum up those scorers. Broncos scoring just the one try through Pitts, uh, Jared Samet scoring all the other points, three goals and a drop goal, and uh, very for... Good, very good on-field kicking game as well by Samet. I, I, I really like him as oh, a player, a to be player. honest. But it makes, it makes you wonder, who the heck has he not been in Super League for the last five years, I think? Cause he, I think he like, did he leave Wakefield in 2015, I think? He did. Yeah, he, 2014, he, and he went to Workington. Yeah, he had two years at Workington, he's yeah, had two he's, years at London, hasn't he? He's so. been at the Broncos, but is he, I, he could do a job in Super League, I'm, I'm sure he can. Oh, yeah, I, I like him as a halfback, mate, because he's just very sparky, yeah. isn't he? Uh, I think sometimes... He's got a lot of flair. I think sometimes he's instinctive, and we don't have enough instinctive players in our game for me at this moment the, in time. There's been whispers that he can be going back to Australia as well at, at the end of this season, which would be a big shame, and it'd be a big, big loss for the Broncos. What do you make of Johnson as a winger? Because he scored two tries for Salford, and I quite like him as well. Quite aggressive, isn't it? Yeah. As well, when he's, when he's taking taking the carries in, I, I, I do like it when wingers are aggressive. And, and to be fair, I like it when I see wingers take the ball and I'll help the pack out because you see the, the forward pack struggling at the t at sometimes on, on their own line. So it's good to see. Johnson's a good, good player, don't get me wrong. He struggled with injuries a little bit this year, hasn't he? <laughs> yes. he's, he has been in, in and out of the team, but if he can touch that up then... Uh, because obviously Jake Bibby's been filling in for him. Jake Bibby's done a, a great job. I really like Jake Biggie. You know? Jake Biggie. 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 I'm Biggie and Bibby up. So Jake Bibby, I really like him. Um, and I know that you'll be surprised because he's a Wiganer like you, isn't he? So yeah. and, I, and I'm sort of backing him. Well, he's a Wigan lad. Uh, there's plenty of Wiganers in the Super League system. I think Wigan Warriors just produce players for everyone else. But go on, Dave. Don't be like that. <laughs> that's because every, everybody wants to sign for Wigan, first of all. That, that's, that could open up another whole debate. We might need another shot clock on that, by the way. Come on, we've only got three minutes. We have, game. we have. Um, now, it was a weekend of uh, shock results, if you like, with the championship sides largely getting on top of their Super League counterparts. The next game I want to touch upon, Toronto Wolfpack against Widnes. I'll be honest, I didn't see it. I was up in Cumbria this weekend, so... Well, I, it was expected for me. I thought I thought Toronto would, would win before the game, and they, did, they didn't surprise me afterwards. Can we just speak? Uh, I, the, the winners players have got bagged on Twitter for for having a pint after the game in in Toronto, and I think that's a, a little bit uncalled for. But 
and I, I understand the, the witness fans' frustration, but I, I, I don't think blaming the, the players for just having a drink with their own fans who travelled over after the game. Hold that thought because we, we have got the section coming up on witness, oh, so yeah, so we can talk but about I that in a bit that more really detail. I think it, it was job done for Toronto, and I think it's one, just one step closer to uh, to getting promotion to Super League, and I think the the Wolfpack will replace the the Vikings. Patterson, Russell, and Wallace, the try scorers. The O'Brien kicking four goals. For the Vikings, Meller, possibly a future Toronto player himself, scoring a try. Dean also grabbing another one with Inu kicking two goals. The one that I do want to spend the next or to almost two minutes on is Toulouse Olympic and Hull Kingston Rovers. Now, Hull Kingston Rovers, they rode away in France, didn't they? 19 points to nil. I saw it and I thought, oh, that's got to be a half time score that. And it yeah. wasn't. But no, yeah, I was, I was at, at Warrington uh, St. Helens and. I was fo following the game after afterwards on on the updates while I was doing my, my post match reaction and I couldn't believe it. I thought I thought nineteen nil at half. The the goal run away this in in second half. Okay, I think it could, could have been forty odd points to to six or something like that. But wow, Sylvan Hills is it, is it whatever he said at half time with them dressing rooms. He needs to bottle it and sell it. He yeah. could make a fortune off eBay, couldn't he? <laughs> Very much so. Words of wisdom, Dave. I tell you, whatever he said at half time works, and they came out firing in the second half. Reece, is it Reese Curran or Reese Curran? Reese Curran. Um, oh, he actually made him sound French then. He's Australian. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Reese Curran. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a brilliant player. Him. I've, I've, I've only seen him a couple of times live. But Excellent yeah. gap runner. Yeah, he is. Makes tons yeah. of meters as well, doesn't he's he? He's a very good player. So let's run through these scorers. Curran scored, Centroni grabbed two, Roban, Marjorite and Adder with the scorers with Corella kicking five goals from eight attempts. Brilliant comeback off the off the t turf really, wasn't it, from uh, Toulouse. Hull Kingston Rovers, they saw tries through Mulhern, two from Hall and one from Atkin. Goal split between Tickle with three and uh, Maguire who dropped a goal, uh, which gives us about nine seconds to reflect on Halifax 6, Leeds Rhinos 34, expected. expected. Very good timing there, Dave. It was. There we go. We've got our first shot clock. Oh, it reminds me of my alarm this morning. That Stop day. it. Well, that's why. You know, I, I need to... I'm going to have that outside so that you know that you should be on time for when we're recording this. <laughs> right, so that's the qualifiers out of the way and over and done with. Um, let us now set the same shot clock up and talk about the Super 8s. So, the clock is up and running. Shall we start with that god awful match on Thursday? That was just awful. I fell asleep in it. Yeah, it was. It, it weren't one of the the, the the best games of rugby league you'll see all year. I think it was. Uh, it was the, the weather obviously didn't help, and I'm not just saying that the game were poor because of, because of the weather. It, it was it was shocking anyway. But we can ultimately just got got the job done, secure the home semi final, which were which were the main thing mm -hmm. for them. Huddersfield, they gave a couple of young lads another run out. The senior on the wing looks a real talent. He's going to be a player for the future, along with his brother, uh, Louis Senior. Uh, Matt English, great player, and very much so a good player. Spent a bit uh, of time in the Championship this year with Dewsbury as well, and I, you, you think that because he's got that little bit more experience of playing against men, he's starting to stand out, isn't he, when he gets picked for the Giants in the first team? And uh, Cruz Lehman, big fan of him in dummy half. Oh, I'm a Fracking big fan of him. I, you Fracking know, player. I can't believe it. We're agreeing on stuff. We usually disagree, don't we? But, um, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big one with that. But, I, but, but Wigan, Morgan, that's great. It was good to see him start because he's... For, for Wigan this year, he's come off the bench a lot of games this year. He's, he's not starting many, really. Uh, he started the game because, obviously, um, Sam Tompkins went into the halves. Uh, Outstanding performance from from Morgan S. Great. Looks like he's uh, he's staying at Wigan in 2019 as well. Uh, you'd be a fan of that, would James stopping at Wigan? Oh, I certainly would. I think he's a cracking. He's so exciting to watch. I think he's he's just a real live wire. Defences don't really know what he what he what he is doing at times. Wigan don't even know what he's doing at the time. Uh, he's got a cracking step on him. Uh, a big positive for Wigan if he does stay. He has said he is staying. So. 
uh, the Warriors fans will be uh, delighted. So Liam in with the try for Huddersfield Giants, Bruff with the goal, and for Wigan it was Eskere and Gildart with the tries, Tomkins with two goals, and Eskere with a drop goal as well. 13 points to six, and yet I'll be honest, I fell asleep in the game, so I can't really talk about it. On to the next one. On to the next one. So that was Friday night. Um, I suppose an expected result between Castleford Tigers and Wakefield, 42 points to 10. How good's Greg Eden at the moment, though? He's just stepped back onto that wing. He's scoring tries for fun. I think it's something like 16 in his last eight games. Yeah, he's, he's on fire at the moment, isn't he, Eden? And I think, especially for, for the semi-finals in, in a couple of weeks' time, a lot of teams will be, will be, will be keeping an eye on Eden. And, and then, obviously, that frees up space more across across the park for Castleford because people will be targeting Eden. But he, he's great. He's, he's great uh, out of yardage carries as well. Comes up with some spectacular finishes. Uh, Wakefield, down to, to the last 17 plays they were uh, in the game. I thought it was an interesting ploy because they did try to, to, to move Castleford around, didn't they? And they weren't obviously out with that early knock to Grix as well where he had to go off and then he couldn't return due to the yeah. the protocols and I think he's done his jarring, hasn't he? Oh, has he? Is I it, think that he's, might be yeah, what he's oh, done, oh, yeah. All oh, right, OK. So, but down to the last 17... A lot of players got on Wakefield's back. Af uh, a lot of fans, sorry, got on Wakefield's back after the game, and I thought it was a uh, that was uncalled for as well. Because when you when you're down to your last 17, there's a late change in the team, a lot of disruption. Uh, they didn't have a lot to play for. I know they're playing for fifth, but they didn't they didn't have a lot to play for. Uh, Castleford did. They wanted to to secure the th the third spot, if you like. Uh, job done for for Castleford as 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 they have been out for for the uh, Super Eights. It's, it's just been job done for teams. You was at this game on Saturday, Warrington against St Helens. Uh, it was Warrington fourteen, St Helens thirty four. What did you think? I tell you something for for something that uh, for a game that didn't have much meaning to it. It was brilliant. It was one of the best first halves I've watched in rugby league all year. What was the half time score? It, uh, it had six twelve. It had everything in the first half. Honestly, it was it was brilliant. It had a bit of beef, bit of a bit of fire in the bellies. Would you say Regan Grace made an outstanding ta one on one tackle uh, on Josh Charlie on the wing, and uh, Matty Lee's got simbined a little bit harsh. I, I would have thought it was completely accidental. I know his knees came into contact with Tyrone Roberts' head, and Roberts didn't come back on the field because he failed the concussion assessment, but. No intention at all in the challenge, really good half. Uh, Saints just pulled away in the second half, a, a very good performance. Ben Barber certainly looked the player he was maybe two months ago. He was outstanding, Ben Barber. And Danny Richardson had one of his best games in a while. I think he scored a try and kicked five goals as well. Uh, which gives us 18 seconds to sum up Hull FC against Catalan's Dragons. We probably don't need 18 seconds. It's just like one of these sides had to win, didn't they? I think, is it, is it ten, 10 consecutive games in a row for, for Hull FC now? So it was a, it was another, just a, a, a bit of a ball fest, really. Good result for Catalan's, who, who were probably still a bit on goal from the, the Challenge Cup victory. And there's the shot clock. So we're out of time for that segment. But uh, yeah. I think I'll, I'll go with you on that. Catalans just finding a way to win and uh, Hull, they just want this season to end, don't they? Um, yeah, so we've gone on to that. Let's have a look at the Betfred Championship Shield. So again, we'll set the clock at five minutes. And away we go. Uh, you was at the first game that I want to talk about. Lee Centurions against Batley. Great win for the Bulldogs. Let's have a, a big congratulations was, to them. Yeah, fair, fair play to Matt Diskin's side. I, they really surprised me when I was watching it on Sunday. I, I fully expected Lee to win. I know Lee have lost a lot of players, I think about eight or nine players in the last uh, couple of months. But uh, look, looking at the, the team the team sheet, you'd expect that Lee side to, to run out on top of Batley. But fair play to the Bulldogs, they came they came out firing. The the halfback combination stood out for me. Louis Jufre and uh, Don Brambani. Wow, what a partnership. You've got, you've got Brambani, who controls the park, got a brilliant kicking game on him. Really, he turned the lead wingers in the fullback around a couple of times with his kicks. Jufre just adds that little bit of French flair, doesn't he? A little, uh, yeah, he's got some lovely bit of uh, piece of footwork. He's skipped through the the lead defence a couple of times. Lee, Ke uh, fair play to, K to Kieran Pertle, the the lead coach after the game. He said that they were finding it hard to get motivated for the game. They finding it hard to to get picked up because. 
all along they, they've been playing in this championship shield and the final was decided before it even started. So is it also because of the things that are going on in the background at least? I think it is, 100% it will be. Because I mean, as far as we know at this moment in time, in two or three weeks time, everybody's redundant. 100%, yeah, of course it will. You, you, the, the players will be going into work or effectively training uh, every day or near enough every day and they'll, and they'll just be thinking, well, there's only a couple more weeks left at this club. There's only a few more, or there's only two more games left. Interesting, you. I, I, I just don't, and, and it's not. It's, I'm not trying to dig out the players because, you, you, to be fair, you probably would be the same, wouldn't you? In, I, in, in your, in your, like in our line of work or in anyone's line of work, you'd be. The, if, if that kind of thing were going on in the background, you didn't know if you, where your future lied. I've written before. elsewhere that I know exactly where those players are coming from because I've faced a redundancy situation. I'm sure you know many of our viewers will have also gone through redundancy at some point. It's not a nice situation. You're thinking of what's going to happen in a couple of months. Although you should, your mind should just be on the present. We're human. It happens, doesn't it? So, yeah. Um, so, fair play to those Lee players and for Kieran Pirtle for keeping it all going. Um, Batley Bulldogs, though, with Johnny Campbell, man on a run at the moment. Yeah, he is. I think, I think it's, it's nine tries in four games for him. We spoke about him last yeah. week. Yeah. He's, he's, he's electric as well. I didn't know how quick he was. He's, he's really yeah. he's really fast. He's really strong. Yeah, he's, he's, he's rapid. He, he, he brought the line a, a couple of times. That he, he left, uh, I can't remember who, who his opposition what Lee Winger were at the time. Left them for dead though on the 50 metre mark and just raced in at the corner and got, got around Jack Owens. He, he's very very quick and uh, an entertaining player to watch. Uh, Rochdale Hornets 26, Dewsbury Rams 22. It's warming up in the bottom, isn't it? <laughs> it's a massive win for the Hornets. Uh, a, a very good good win for them. Uh, Dewsbury, obviously, they're quite they're safe, aren't they, really? And, uh, and you can't really see them getting dragged into it. It's, uh, it's out of Swinton. Rochdale, it was a must win for Rochdale, and they won. Uh, a couple of tries there for Dion Cross, who's on his way to Barrow next season. They've got themselves a really good player there. Uh, I've seen him in action both for, in the amateur leagues and also also for Lancashire a couple of years ago, so yeah, they've got themselves so a good player. It's going to be interesting there. at Rochdale as well because quite a few players are leaving. Obviously, there's going to be a change in coach. So they brought Carl Forster on board, haven't yeah. they? Who played for him when they got yeah. promoted in 2013? I well, thought I'd recognise the name that, that was playing that, for him. That's kind of a pulling power as well, isn't it, mm. for, for, for Carl? Uh, for yeah, for, for Carl Forster himself because. You can say, well, I'll coach, and I'll also play as well. So they get they get two for the price of one, don't they, really? Potentially, yeah, if he still fancies it, that is. Mm. Uh, I mean, he's only 20, 25, isn't he? 26. He's only so. 22, he played a couple of years. That's before. true, that's true. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, Sheffield Eagles, 22. Barrow Raiders, 24. This, according to Mark Aston, was a real low point in all his Eagles days, which he's seen as something, isn't it, considering his involvement. Great for Barrow, though. They've got that elusive away win. Just in the last match, first w away win of 2018 in the penultimate game. Oh, sorry, penultimate. You're right. You're in right. Penultimate game in the Championship Shield. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's better late than never, Dave. <laughs> it, it is. It is better, better late than never. No, I ba think Bar Barrow have been a stern team this year. Obviously, it's always hard going to Cumbria. I know Barrow's not as further as uh, as Whitehaven Cumbria, but it's always tough going to going to them parts and. Especially with the pitch there at Barry, it's, uh, they've got they've got a very good home record, but it's good to see them uh, pick up a win away. It doesn't mean much again though. Very quickly, Swinton Lions 18, Featherstone Rovers 34. Featherstone get the home tie in the Championship Shield final. I like this is working, isn't it? <laughs> I know you must feel like oh it's that alarm again. Let's put it on snooze, but you know it's, 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 I'm sure it's like the same tone as my alarm at all. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's going on. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to set and give us another couple of minutes on League One because we've got another couple of games really to talk about. So this is why I just wanted just to give it just a little bit longer. Highlights not York getting promoted, Dave. Of course it is. It's almost Stags adding a drop goal when they were 16 nil down. Well, they didn't want to get nilled. They avoided getting nilled. Anyway, let's start the clock and then you can have you can have a go. go. Don't don't go. don't be don't be shirty about all these low sides according go. to your methods. Well, here we go, Mr. Anti Super League. <laughs> 
Right, we're out, we are underway. Uh, moving on to Betfred League One, and we are going to concentrate on York in a, a bit more detail. So I will just sort of mention what a great season for him. What a great performance. 3,200 in the ground against Whitehaven. Job done. Fantastic to see that crowd, isn't it? At League One game, three over 3,000 fans at Bootham Crescent. It's a, it's a brilliant effort. Good marketing as well, again by all. We've seen it so many times this season. Uh, they, they surely got an average attendance of over uh, about one and a half thousand this year mm -hmm. uh, York, it's been a brilliant effort and to think how far they've come 18 months ago, they were close to going into administration, right. they were in administration weren't they? They were, they were but stop stop because we will have uh, a lot more to say sorry, about sorry, York I'm, 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 so, <laughs> I'm dragging so, yeah. it into different so, sections again so that's, that's ok, don't, don't worry uh, how good of a job has James Ford done at York? Brilliant, he's, absolutely he's brilliant one of the most exciting young coaches in the game and, so, I, and I do believe if it carries on going like that, impresses at York in the Championship next season, who knows? A Super League club might await for him in the future. So, um, they pipped Bradford Bulls, who did the job against Hemel Stags, as you mentioned, that um, strange drop goal. Not the first time a strange drop goal has ended up on the scoreboard. I remember Lee beating York, funnily enough, a few years ago, 84 nil, and they dropped a goal to make it 84-1. Not a clue. That has stunned you. That has stunned you. Just like, what's, what's point? Grant and Pownall in the tries there for the Bulls, with uh, Grant grabbing two, uh, Johnny Pownall getting two. Do you think Johnny will end up uh, going up into uh, the championship with whoever next season? I, I can see it. He's a championship winger, isn't he? He is. He's, he's championship standard, Johnny Pownall. He's, he's a great player. Good winger. Can put also fill in at fullback if, it, if the team's got any injuries as well. And clinical try scorer on his day. He's a, he's, a, he's a solid championship winger. Now, this is the one where I do want us to go into a bit more detail. What about Coventry? We've got to give Coventry a massive up in this show because I, the I think they do things. they do things right. They're yep. doing everything to a plan. They're not spending money that they haven't got. They're building. They've got a young squad that's getting better year on year. It's set up. Yeah. Box Park Arena. Oh, have you been down there yet? No, I've not, but I've, I've seen it and I've spoken to uh, Al Robinson, the, the chairman of, of Coventry. He's a real decent bloke as well, he isn't is, he? Yeah, he is. Uh, and he... He explained the, the setup to me. It's great setup, he said. And you've seen it on the pictures as well. It does look really good at the Box Park Arena. So you've got everything going for them at the minute. I know, I know the results haven't come all the way this year, and they've, but they've managed to get a couple of wins against like the Heartland clubs. Well, you're right. I mean, the, 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 that, that was like the first Heartland mm -hmm. club victory a few weeks ago against Keithley. They've backed it up with a 14-4 success against a Hunslet side that for much well, of the so season what, has been in that top six, haven't they? What I, what I like about Coventry as well, they, they bring a lot of kids through. They, 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 they're not just uh, they don't just have like a team of of uh, like journeymen if you like. Who, who, they have got a few kids been, from that area. They've been they? around the block. They have, and and, and they, what I like is that I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. They've got students as well, and they've actually got like Irish stu Irish students, uh, Scottish uh, players playing for them, Welsh players playing, and it's it's great to see. And it's a, it's it's like the ultimate expansion club at the minute, isn't it? You look at the uh, the hub of the team and the hub of that team has actually been really, if you like, the spine of that England University side for the last yeah, couple of years as well, yeah, hasn't it? So that, it that, that's what I mean, they've got, they've got a lot of young Lads like Bass out in the centres, you is know, it, offers a bit. Dante, Dante, Dante Samuels. Dante Samuels. He's a Wigan lad, yeah. you know. Yeah, he is. Used to, used to be in the uh, Wigan college side, I think it was. I don't think it, I don't think it was the under-19s, I think it was the college side, but he's, he's a great player on the wing as well. You'll always know when you're watching Dante Marley Samuels, because <laughs> you'll see his big hair, first of all. Um, but yeah, I agree, I saw him play for uh, Lancashire under-19s over this last couple of seasons and done a tremendous job. And uh, I'm really pleased that it's gone right for him, to be honest, looking at that. Um, the game I was at, Doncaster against Workington. Not really a lot riding on this one, but I've got to say, Doncaster... They were very good, ball in hand, uh, 44 points to 32 they won. Um, although, as I was chatting to Leon Price afterwards, he just said, well, they'd done the hard work in the season, so they'd actually given them the chance to, to rest a couple of players. There was no Ollie Wilkes, for example, for them. The, the, yeah, the, the Dons are, have been impressive, haven't they? In, ten in wins in succession. Games. Yeah, t ten wins on the bounce, so they're looking... Very, very good for the players. It was a dress rehearsal, wasn't it? It was, yeah. For, for the it's same again this week, to be um, honest. So, so they kind of they kind of get a feeling for each other. And I remember, well, go, just going off topic a little bit, speaking to Justin 
all broke the, the the Saints coach obviously after the the Warrington game and he said it was it, well the the week's been completely awkward for Saints mm -hmm. because they play them again in two weeks so they didn't know whether to rest players or or to put his full team out because obviously you can you can pick where the weak spots are in each other and and you can pick where the strengths are in your side what what can get on top of them so he just said it was completely awkward and I, and I bet it was the exact same for for Worthington and Doncaster they didn't really want to play to the max. <laughs> Because they want to save themselves for the playoffs. I've got to say, Matty Baharel is a top player at that level. Um, I've not seen him for a couple of years because I saw him coming through at Kingston Rovers and then he had a season at Swinton um, and played up at Newcastle as well. So I have to admit, I've only seen him one or two times, but what a good player. Great boot on him, really good organiser. Nice little turn of pace as well. Jack Logan as well from is it OFC? Yeah, he got injured he, unfortunately. He, he scored two tries, was on course for the Man at Match Award and uh, missed the last 20 minutes yeah. with an injury. So that's a little bit of a, a, a dilemma I think you've got coming up there for, for Richard Horn. You've got a solid team, Doncaster, though. But so have Workington, so it's going to be a really interesting playoff, I think. Going to be great. Keith Lacuga's 24, North Wales Crusaders 22. North Wales were leading in this one up until the final couple of minutes and then Cougar scored right in the last minute through Sealy. Yeah, uh, and it was, I think it was it. Controversial fashion. I think I've seen something on Twitter or something about it. I've, I, I've not seen it. Yeah. I've, I didn't watch the game or I didn't, I've not seen any highlights, but I heard it was uh, in a bit of a controversy at the end. Oldham managed to get the final spot in the playoffs by virtue of a 46 18 win against London Scholars, and they had to do it a bit tough because, uh, I mean, London. They chuck a lot at you, don't they? I mean, they've also got this link up with Wigan as well, so I think they've got a couple of young Wigan players down there at the moment who are trying to make their mark. Yeah, and, and but when you, whenever you see post-match reaction from from um, the the players and the coaches who come up against London, the, the time is going to go off any second now, Dave. But whenever oh, oh. Uh, you see people talk about scholars this season, even though the score lines may have been big, they said it's been a really tough battle. So unless teams just run away with it, it's like yeah. towards the end. But apparently, it's a really, really tough battle, especially when you when you go to London. Well, Leon Price said the same thing yeah. when uh, working to come up against uh, scholars last week. Yeah, I said that they were they were really good. Um, the impressive thing about Newcastle Thunder, as well as the scoreboard against West Wales, and I know that time has gone, uh, so I am stretching this where I said, but I, I just want to just mention this. Newcastle, they're doing a hell of a lot of things right. They've got so many academy players coming through. I think it were 10 players of local origin that re played for Newcastle this week. 98 that's points to six. That, that's, it is, it's, it's brilliant. And I said, I said a couple of weeks ago, there's, there's something special going on at Newcastle, I'm sure of it. They've made a couple of marquee signings for next year which will obviously aid the development, the, the younger players' development. Lewis Young looks a top player for Thunder in a couple of years' time. Is it Thierry Paul Ritson as well? Yeah, was it working to Thierry Paul Ritson? He always seems to score for, for Newcastle. He always seems to be on the score sheet. Uh, so they're doing a good job. And I he didn't score last week. Did he not? <laughs> but he always, seems to, he always seems to score. You're right, you're right. Um, and uh, I seen on Twitter the other day, the their average attendance for the 2018 season is about 1,080. Yep. The average attendance, brilliant. It's up by, I think I read 7 or 8% on the last year, isn't it? Which is great. Can, and, I, and it's not a dig at Lee, this, but considering Lee Lee's attendance against Batley, two Heartland clubs, Lee could have been pushing for promotion a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of months ago. And theirs was only 1,700. And Newcastle in division below, an expansion side, only 700 off. It says something, doesn't it? Against West Wales as well, who wouldn't have bought, brought uh, many travelling support. OK, we're heading back onto the shot clock, because now I want to talk through fixtures. So we're going to whiz through these. Again, we have seven minutes from now. So coming up this Thursday, Salford Red we Devils. predictions? Take, if you want to, you can. I, I don't like predictions, I'll be honest. Go, go on, you, 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 said the thing, you said the games, and I'll just, I'll just say to you. Oh, we're doing it, we're rushing through it, so we might not need seven minutes here. Well, we might. Oh, go on then, go on. We'll do a little preview then. Go no, on. no, well, that's OK. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. I can run it. We've got a little bit of time. We've, we've only spent... 25 seconds doing that now. Uh, right, Thursday, Salford Red Devils taking on Toulouse Olympique. I think Salford will, will edge it. Hastings back. Pure, purely because it's it's at Salford. I think if it, if it were at Toulouse, it'd be a different story, but I'm going with the Red Devils. OK, on Friday, it's the return of the Betfred Super League Super 8s. St. Helens against Castleford. 
it's going to be an interesting one. Both teams are playing in the semi-finals a week after. I expect a lot of changes from both sides, but I'll, I'll just go with the home side, uh, Saints. Wakefield against Warrington. Do you think that Steve Price will carry on with this movement of sort of experimenting a bit with his side a little bit? Oh, 100%. I think uh, he received a couple of... Well, their team received a couple of injuries. But Tyron Roberts won't be able to play. He'll be can coast, um Kevin Brown had an abductor... Uh, injury See, people week. talk about abductor. Where, where the ex an abductor? Do you know where it is? I've heard coaches refer to no. this before, and I, I, I'm not very good at this type of no. thing. So, if Prince you know hashtag abductor, where is it? Can you tell us? <laughs> Share this and, and see if you can find a doctor. Uh, he'll probably be without Ben Murdoch Massilla as well. He, he was carrying an injury in the game, so he'll, he'll be rested anyway, even if he's just got a little niggle. Uh, Boarding Thompson. It, I think it was a rib injury or or so, something on his <laughs> side. Anyway, it, it, it didn't look good for for Bodine Thompson. So we'll be without the the back rowers as well. He might rest a couple of his older heads. Maybe Ben Westwood as well. Save him for the week after. So I'm expecting a lot of changes. But I'll I'll, I'll still go with a with a Warrington win though. You mentioned Bodine Thompson. He's one of several players that have been told that they're on the way come the end of the season from Warrington. Um, any surprises there from that list? Probably not to be fair. I, th I think I would have expected Mitch Brown to stay at Warrington next year if he hadn't got the injury. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when you've got an in when he's got an injury and he's off contract, then the, the likelihood is they're not going to renew it, are they? Because he's not. He's. I think if I'm if I'm right in saying Mitch Brown's not even going to be fit for the start of next season. So really, it was such a bad injury. Yeah. So so he won't even have a full pre-season. So he'll be coming in if if they kept him on, he'll be coming into next year with uh, not full pre-season behind him as well so um, I think that was the only one where I was a little bit surprised but um, it's a good job man Freddie didn't have the same issue at Wigan isn't it well yeah we, well Wigan put, put faith in him uh, rewarded him with a with a one year deal uh, who else has gone Tyron Roberts we knew he, he was going back he's going Gold Coast uh, Mitch Brown's leaving uh, Dom Crosby was sent out on loan to lead so you didn't expect him to that was stay. expected wasn't it uh, he was going Taylor Prell he's not made a first team appearance yet I like Taylor Prell so I'm a he came last from year union, didn't he? yeah yeah he's, he's got more of a union background but I really liked him I saw him on loan at um, North Wales Crusaders last year and he did a really good job for him well, it, it, could, it be might, yeah, could be useful he, he could be useful well to be fair we were speaking about uh, last week about Sulphur's depth could he go to Salford and add, add something to their team next year or something like that? He's, he's, he's very quick, isn't he? Who else is, who else is going, Dave? Come on, come There's on. seven in total. There is seven. There is seven, and I can't... Bordine can't. as well. Bordine Thompson, probably... He might return to to uh, Australia. He might play in the lower grades. Uh, who knows? He might uh, get a gig over here. Mm, interesting, interesting. Uh, right, um... Wigan against Hull. Surely you can't see past Wigan on this one. No, su surely not. I think we're going to rest a lot of players ahead of their semi against um, Castleford the week after. But I think Wigan are at home and Hull are just diabolical at the minute, aren't they? I'll go with the Warriors on this one. In the qualifiers, Leeds Rhinos against Toronto. That might not be such an easy ride for the Rhinos. I don't think it will be, but... I think Toronto have got more to play for as well, haven't they? I think Leeds are all but secure. For, for next year in Super League now, whereas Toronto need to still keep grinding out the points. Well, at and the moment, they're third in this whole... So, at the moment, they're going up without need of the million pound but, game. But I do think Leeds will want to finish the qualifiers, having won all, all of the games, and uh, I'm going... Well, like, they've lost one already. Well, well so yeah, but finishing top... And finishing winning, top, they would winning, finish top. Yeah, that winning, would ensure finishing than, top. Winning more than the other team, so... I'm going Leeds, especially because they're at home. Uh, Catalans at home to Huddersfield Giants. That's surely going to be a Catalans win, hasn't it? You, 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 yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? I'd, at home advantage. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd go with Catalans. Is it, is it, well, it'd be Catalans' last home game of the year as well, so they'll want to send, uh, well, wave the fans goodbye with a nice uh, victory in a, a Challenge Cup gleaming in the, in the stands. Are they also giving a French salute as well to um, uh, the lad that has... Got them out of much stick this year. Just drink water. Are you may I'm amazed that he's not been given a contract there. Yeah, well, yeah, and I think I, I think it was Lee Weekly that I read in this week, and it was a little bit uh, gutted. Is it, well, very gutted not to to get a new deal. I mean, this will be this will be two contracts in two years that he's yeah. had ripped up in front I, of him. I think he said he was. A, he felt a little bit filthy about about the whole situation. To be honest, but, uh, he said it was a, a little bit filthy from uh, Catalans. 
And to be fair, I kind of kind of agree with him to a certain extent because he's pulled them out of the dumps uh, so many times this year. But obviously, if they'd already signed Matty Smith at the uh, similar time when they signed and brought Josh Drinkwater over, then you you know what I mean. It's, it, you, you can't have them have both, can you? Because you've already you've already got uh, Sam Tompkins for next year. You've already got Tony Gijo for next year. So they're gonna one of them are gonna have to play in the halves. And uh, you've all already got like Luke Salber, the young lad coming through, Sammy Sony, Lange, so you can't have them all. To be fair, I think Lange could do a job at centre, but I'll move on Always from that. Forward, but, uh, oh, I'll, actually, I'll yeah, go, that's a good uh, shout, Luce. Yeah. Um, also on Saturday, London Broncos against Halifax in the qualifiers. That one's on telly. Well, yeah, well, if, if London win, they, they put themselves in a very good position. Is it in the capital? It is, yeah, the yeah. Finals? Well, I'm going, I'm going London. Like Halifax have, have tried the best in in these uh, these qualifiers. There's no doubt about it. But they're a part time team up against full time. You'd expect the full time every day of the week. I'm going London. Uh, Witness will farewell the Super League with yeah, a they'll qualifiers they'll game at Hulkingston Rovers. Lose. That's on Sunday. The the hooter's going to go, the alarm's going to sound, and I'm going to let it go. Because I've still got just uh, another couple of fixtures just to go through. So, in the Betfred Championship Shield, we have Batley at home to Swinton. Batley. I I think they'll be too strong for Swinton, even though Swinton have got more to play for than Batley. Dewsbury at home to Lee Centurions. Lee to bounce back and go into the Championship uh, Shield final with a, a bit of form. Barrow travelling over to Featherstone Rovers. I think Featherstone will want to go into the Championship field with with form as well. I think they'll come out on top. And Sheffield Eagles at home to Rochdale Hornets. Rochdale win that, you know, and they could escape having to do this uh, whole repercharge charge I'm playoff. Rochdale, I'm going Rochdale. I'm going Rochdale. Oh, going, so the Hornets to Hornets. do it. The come Hornets on. to do it. Oh. Uh, I'm going, going for the red rolls this time rather than the, the white rolls. Betfred League 1, it's semi-final time. It's Bradford against Oldham. The two sides have come up with some really good games over the course of the season. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, it was really close mm. at White Bank, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, well, Vesticur Stadium. Well, it is, yeah. Now, but, but, <laughs> I, but it's in the White Bank area of Oldham. I'm sure no one will mind. But yeah, Playing on the artificial turf there. I, th- I think it, it will be a, a tough game for Bradford. I think that Oldham will make it tough. They're a very aggressive side. But I think uh, the Bulls will have too much in the end and I think they'll come out on top. Um, and we, we already mentioned it's a case of uh, rewind and repeat, isn't it? Because it's Doncaster against Workington. You know what, having seen both sides over recent weeks, I'm still really tempted with Doncaster. And that's taking absolutely nothing away from Workington because you've got the likes of Penkovic, who, when he came on on Sunday, was absolutely sensational. Been great, hasn't he? The, the, for the entirety of the season. Yeah. Like Penkovic. Yeah, just, he's got so much class. You know what? I wonder whether that'll be Doncaster, but it'll be Doncaster after extra time. I think it'll be Doncaster. Uh, I think Workington will make it really tough. I Leon Price has done a, a great job at Workington this year. He's been nominated for yeah. Coach of the Year, hasn't with he? The, with the resources he's had, he's, he's done a very good job. Uh, Workington, good team, don't get me wrong, but I think Doncaster in too good a form at the minute. It's at one ten games on the bounce, confidence will be sky high. And they've got a couple of great individual players, like you said before, Dave. Um, I'll tell you a name to look out for who's playing for, for Doncaster this season. Sanderson. On the full back Hull. or the wing. He he's on from Hull, isn't he? Yeah, he is, but he's like a spit of a young Craig Hall. He's got that same languid running style. Makes things look very easy when he's got hold of the ball. He Thank is class. Well. Absolute class. Yeah, but I, I watched him a couple of years ago in in the the City of Academy. Great, great young young talent. He can play in the halves as well. I, I want to stick with League One because now we're here. We can where we can wax lyrical about the York City Knights and what a season that they've had. Fifteen wins on the bounce have carried them to this promotion. Astonishing, isn't it? It is. It's astonishing. The James Ford has done a magnificent job at York this year. The media manager, Gav Wilson, and his team have, have done exceptionally well, getting th- over 3,000 at Bootham Crescent. Fantastic effort. Great. He's a friend of mine and yours as well, isn't yeah. he? And has done a lot with Love Rugby League as well over the years. He's, so he's, he is yeah, really, really it, good. It's, it's just nice to see all these initiatives, and, it's, and it makes... It's, it's just a feel-good story of the game, isn't it, when, when you see stories like that, and when you see attendances like that, because you... No, uh, no offence to, to the likes of Oldham, but you see like Oldham now getting like 350 people to a game. 
and you get York excelling, at selling the brand and selling the product, and uh, it's just good to see, and it's good well, to see all the in initiatives because I all the initiatives are simple, but they're so effective in what they do. I think there's a the, I, I've certainly noticed. Maybe it's because I've been doing the stuff with our league, but there seems to be a, a lot more clubs at that level grasping the nettle and moving things forward mm. from a promotion point well, of view. You, Workington's, Workington's done a fantastic yeah, yeah. job with various things. I noticed that they got the old uh, uh, backers with the, uh, the the world leaders on and again. But, uh, and, and, and just some, something else which is so simple but so effective is they, they got Ben Stokes, the cricketer. To, to do a little plug for for their game against Doncaster in the playoff as well, which is which is good. It's simple. Text ten seconds to record the video, so that will hopefully get a, a couple more fans through the gates. What you're saying? Are we available for doing uh, various voiceovers for things? Is that so? You know, you you'd be quite happy if someone from Doncaster contacted you and said, "Come on to Donny." More than happy, Dave. You know, I'd be really happy at doing stuff like that as well. Fiver, fiver each. No, five are between us. <laughs> come on, come on. You, we can't overcharge. We can't overcharge for that talent. In fact, you know, we'll, we'll, do it, we'll do it for a bottle of Ribena. That'll be sorted. Pimp tall's better than Ribena, but other ones are available, of course. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, I mean, this whole season for York has been built on the field it's lads with such experience as Graham Horns had a big year uh, then Bachelor Bachelor's who's got a super, a super league yeah. gig out of it so fair play to he can shift as well you know Ash Robson as well yeah ex, really ex good Castleford. yeah yeah played a lot on the wing this season to be, to be fair they've got a very good team Connor Robinson in the halves Connor's been brilliant yeah, I mean yeah. I noticed again he kicked 8 goals from 10 yeah. attempts at the weekend yeah. and um, I, I know a few weeks ago he was Getting fairly close to the club record for points in a season. Um, I'll have to double check because I've not Jude checked whether he's passed it. Jude Maziv, yeah, yeah. He was at Wakefield, wasn't he? Yeah, I think was he. I think he might have been born in Zimbabwe. All oh, right, okay. And he, and he came over. Oh, what a story that would. In fact, he, he might have been born there, or he might have had heritage from there. But uh, great to see. I, I remember watching him for England Academy. You know? I remember thinking, wow, this kid is a great talent. He was great to watch. He, as soon as he picked that ball up in his hand, he was aware. He was, th was absolutely rapid. He got, got a good step on him as well. I think what they've also done as well... I think, I think he played for Wakey a, f a few times before. Are you right? You're York. right. I'm, I'm sure that he did, to be honest. I'm just going to have a quick look at the team, actually, that they, uh, they put out at the weekend, if I can find it. You can tell that we record this live anyway, can't you? Because I, sh I, I should have had that bookmarked, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's on there. And uh, you know, so yeah, so let's just go through the team. They've had Matty Marsh in as well, so Hull Kingston Rovers have helped out as well along York the way, Kingston haven't they? Ro Rovers. Give over. They've not had that uh, well, many. Well, they've not had that many players. Well, they have. They haven't. They have. They haven't. Brad Hay as well. He's an, he's another decent Banker player. Kane. Oh yeah, we didn't mention Ben Kane. He's going around for another year next year, yeah, isn't he? Is, uh, yeah. Playing at halfback recently, which has been really good. I was impressed with that kid, Ronan Dixon. Again, another uh, lad that's been around a couple of years, starting to make his mark. Andy Ellis has done a fantastic job wherever he's been. He's announced that he's going to be retiring come the end of the season. Josh um, Jordan Roberts, Jack Ormanroyd. Jack Ormanroyd, if I'm not mistaken, played in the World Club Challenge against Melbourne at start of the year. He did, uh, came through at Featherstone to Jack Armanroy. Not your average background of a Super League pro, but um, he's done a good job there. Big I like I like Josh Jordan Roberts. Um, I liked played his dad. Hundle, didn't they, I right? liked his dad as well. You don't know who his dad is? Two Bobs. Rob Roberts. Do you ever see Rob Roberts play? No. Fantastic it's player. I'm sure a lot of a lot of people watching this, um, they'll they'll. I I really liked. He's my sort of player. Aggressive but skillful. Um, was was really good. Played uh, for a while at Huddersfield. Played all over. I think he played at Hunslet like his son was doing. And a right. uh, uh, coach currently of East Leeds as well. So I, hope, I, I hope that's a good enough mention for you too, Bob's. Uh, but yeah, jo Josh is going along the same sort of right. have your autograph, <laughs> I've already got it. I've already got it. Got it on bottom of a team sheet this year. <laughs> uh, but they've also got lads like Tim Spears as well. He spent nearly 10 yeah. years at Featherstone. Um, just Veteran pro, isn't it? Guys that know the way yeah. around the professional game. So I'm, I'm really, really impressed with what York have done this season. Um, uh, for me... 
Forward is a Super League coach in waiting. Mm. Uh, he gets the opportunity to do that job full time because he's been combining it with his teaching job for the last couple of seasons as well. Um, and I like what he says. I like the way he comes across. He's very enthusiastic. Um, I liked him as a it's player, to be honest. Say it, but it's all as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like because you, obviously in, in in a professional environment, sometimes you get you get the usual the the, the usual lines of like professionalism. Is this where you can come in and do your typical your, your typical Wigan interview? It's gonna be tough. <laughs> It's a tough game, a really tough place to go. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. I'm not doing it for the third week in a row. Oh, go on, no, go on. I'm not doing it. You know I'm that we've got we've got people that really tune in just to see no, your exactly. your jibs. You, you, people start tweeting me soon, saying just oh just, just do impression, just one more time. I'm not uh, doing it. I'm not I'm not making myself into that person, there. Hashtag impression. He will. We'll bring it back next week. I'll I'll, I'll talk him round. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, well done to the York City Knights. Fantastic season. History making and in the championship next year. Oh, what about that for timing? Oh. <laughs> I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Tommy Cooper, isn't it? This is <laughs> I'm wearing a face. Wearing a face. <laughs> I'm channeling my inner Tommy Cooper. I'm surprised you know who Tommy Cooper is. If you didn't know who. Oh, it's He's great. You know who two Bob Roberts was? Great comedian. I don't mean comedy media. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've got this comedy thing going on. It's like Little and Large, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the rugby league version of Little and Large. Um, right. What duo would we be, Dave? Well, we'd have, we'd have to make it into a trio as well when James is here. Well, I think it's Fat Man and Dobbin. <laughs> 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 what says you with that? Right, okay. Um, Witness Vikings. <laughs> From one comedy act to another. Well, I think you can say. Precisely, what, yeah. what, Atrocious. What, what do you see has gone wrong there over these last two years? Because you go back two years and they were pushing they were pushing top eight, weren't they? Hashtag bring bets back. You think that comes down to it? No, it's, no, it's not fully. I just like winding James up in the office. James Gordon, the, the editor of Love, Love Rugby League. Uh, a wi big witness fan. Hashtag uh, not here again. He's absolutely distraught at the moment. I I, I came in office yesterday. Oh, no, he didn't have the lights off. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hands, lights were off. And I thought, are you all right, James? He said, no. He just So I, I just started giving him a hug, put my arm around him. I said... You'll be all right. You might be back in Super League, maybe 2030, hopefully. What 2030 years? Yeah. yeah. Not not 2030. That's a bit too soon, isn't it? <laughs> With the rebuild job that's needed there, no, surely. But, but in, all, in all seriousness, um, you know you kept you kept a really good straight face. Then I like yeah, that. There's, there's been a there's been a, a couple of things, hasn't there, that's, that's gone wrong. I, I just don't think they've got enough quality to to stay in the league. But what I do like about Witness is the youth. I've said it multiple times now. They, they bring the youth through. And, but has it been too much at times this year? Because I think there's about 15 young lads played from this year. Mm. Uh, is it too much and not too much experience? Uh, someone in another sport once said you can't win anything with kids. True, but then they did. <laughs> they did win stuff with kids, didn't they? Um, so, in, in that analogy they did. But, in that sport, yeah. I don't know, is it... I mean, they have got I, 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 don't, like, I don't think you can blame it all on the coaching, to be fair. I just think... I think they've been skint. Don't get, but they've not told people that they've been skint. Yeah, but which clubs aren't skint? Exactly. It, apart from the top f five, maybe. Ish. Do, do you know what I mean? And which clubs aren't skint, apart from Toronto? No, but I think they've had to really cut the budget even further. So, whereas we know for definite, because it's been confirmed by Michael Carter over Carter, at Wakefield, yeah, no, that they've got the lowest uh, the lowest wage bill in Super League. Yeah, I bet Winnies weren't that far off. Are you taking Mick? What, for how being much, low? How much would they be paying Charlie Gobu, who played in NRL three months ago? Well, he would have come over. It's only a short-term contract, that though, isn't it? Because that'll go, and he'll get back in Oz now. He won't give a two hoots about what he's doing next, will he? Yeah, but he'll still be on decent money for two months. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but you're not paying a full twelve. You know, so how many? I don't think they'll be. They'll be. They'll be like. I don't think they're going to be spending anywhere near the salary cap, would they? No, and and I think, and I think they've not been honest with the fans, and maybe because no, they've alienated nah. the fans there, haven't they? 
Yeah, well, so yeah, the, the, the fans aren't happy there. Is this because they've it, not a, communicated it a, to a, them? A lot of, a lot of fans have see, seem to be wanting uh, the chief exec, James Rule, to leave the club. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I don't know if, it, if he needs to stay or go. I don't know how much of it is James Rule's um, fault or wrongdoing. I, I don't know if he has done anything wrong, but the, the fans certainly seem to want him out. But going back to what you said about the, the salary, no, they're not going to be anywhere near the salary cap. Mm. No doubt about it. But so this is what I was saying. I bet that they're one of the lowest payment clubs in Super League. Yeah, they probably will be, but they're the bottom club in Super League, so they don't won't be any higher. And if they were any higher, then then one of the lowest. Ah, but Wakefield, look at what Wakefield's done, and they're, 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 oh, they have oh, the yeah, lowest, yeah, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you were, so you're right in that. So I I think. Witness will still be able to afford the players. I don't think they'll be struggling to to pay. Them. They've already said that they're going to be full time in the championship. Yeah, but I think you'll see a lot of players leave. I think I think you'll see a lot of the young lads on full time deals. But obviously, which is quite wrong in rugby league. But why is it lot, wrong? A lot, a lot. Of, no, not 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 the young lads. But you'll see a lot. The I mean the the, the pay for the young lads. Because it's, it's shambolic the pay for young lads. You can get you can get players now on full time deals on about twelve grand a year. Depends. It's, it's not good that. Depends what they've signed for though, doesn't it? Because you have got to you have got to guarantee them a minimum wage, haven't you? Well, yeah, yeah, well, you, right. you do have to sort of like guarantee that minimum earning. Yeah, but but young lads can be on about twelve, thirteen grand a year on a full time professional contract, and that that's. That's not fair on on the young lads, really, for, especially for for what they put themselves through. A lot of people say, "Oh, yeah, it'd be great, be a professional sportsman as well. You, you train." But four if that's five hours a day. if that's all clubs can afford, and you know you're banging on about bringing lots of young players in, mm. you know, sort of that. So that's the market value at that stage, isn't it? They will jump and earn as they get yeah, but older. Compare that to Australia, then. Yeah, but we shouldn't keep comparing ourselves to Australia because yeah, Australia, we we're, do. we're a little speck, aren't we? I mean, I know we brought a shot clock in, which you know is very similar to the Aussies, you know. So maybe you know, fair play the NRL at that one. But um, I just kids will always get paid lower wages. It's just a fact of life. Yeah, but not. It's disastrously low. Well, well what should they be paid then? More than that. What would you be paying them though? Uh, so, I mean, so what would what would you say? So Minimum of so twenty grand, probably. Yeah, I, it, it, obviously. Can clubs afford it though? It's all about what clubs can afford too. Well, stop pay, stop getting a thirty-four year old over from Australia. You'd be able to pay him, wouldn't you? I, I agree with you on that. We've got too many journeymen over in our game. Well, you Definitely go. agree with you on that. It, 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 it so go away, it, Charlie Gubb. No, no, no. This, this ain't anything against him. To be fair, he's probably been one of when his best forwards in qualifiers. But um, you, you get these players coming over who are probably on six, seven times the amount of money that a young lad's getting paid. Who, who's like an homegrown player? Hashtag Tory Britain. <laughs> But it is that's but that's what that's what it's yeah. like. I'm not I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. But uh, as you you know yourself, coming into a uh, a, a new thing, uh, coming into journalism, you're on a low wage when you start, and then as you develop, your wage and your stock rises, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, that's the idea. It's well, never happened yeah. with me. <laughs> 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 it's been opposite with me. <laughs> I think we're both on that same that same <laughs> ride, you know. It's like, yeah, it's like roller coaster when it reaches top. Wee! <laughs> uh, oh, look! Oh. We've yeah. been saved. Pies out of oven. <laughs> Pies have come. Yeah, uh, that that meat and potato will do for me, love. If only, Dave. <laughs> Get nothing in this place. <laughs> Get nothing in the no. Oh, it was right. Bottom lip job to go in then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess all we can say is that uh, witness are going to have to rebuild, and it's a big job on yeah, the hands there. But isn't I, it? I hope I hope they can keep the youngsters, and I hope that I hope we still get regular like a couple of thousand attendants next year. I know I know it's going to be difficult, and I know they're in the league below, but I, I, because I, I do like witness as a club. They're, they're I a like witness as a club. A lot of history. They've got a great youth system. They bring a lot of players through. So hopefully they can keep the majority of them younger players. I know the likes of Danny Walker and Matt Whitley have been linked with moves elsewhere, but I hope they can keep as many as they can 
get rid of a, a lot of Deadwood in team and uh, go again fresh next year. And and to be fair, winners in championship might be the best thing for them because it, it, it stops them losing games. Honestly, and I'm not I'm not taking Mick either. It'll stop them losing games. Before they beat Halifax, it was 17 games straight without a loss. About 22, I think. It without was to win. In, in think, the yeah. league. Without, uh, yeah, sorry, without to win. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd, be getting, you'd, be, you'd be putting the house, up, the house <laughs> full signs up, wouldn't you, um, with so many wins on the trap? So, in, in the Championship, they'll be competitive, they'll be full-time, they'll be wanting to get in that top four, so it'll be great. It'll be great to watch as well, though, uh, witness. You, <laughs> fans might, take, might be excited going to to home ground rather than uh, go, go into home ground knowing that they'll probably uh, lose the game. Right, we've gone through our agenda for the, ga uh, for the game, for the for this episode. Um, you had a few comments from I fans did. as well that we wanted to I go did. through um, sort of pretty so quickly. Well, Adrian Jackson got in touch with us uh, a couple, well, last night actually. And, He's uh, always late. And... Um, <laughs> He was on about the two other games. We've we've been through. We've that. done that. We've, we've done that got one. one about the 2025 World Cup. Oh is yeah, because going to be held in USA, Dave. Uh, as we know at the moment, no, I, I don't, don't think, think so. It will. I don't think it is. I think it, it's more Sports International that um, have, uh, are struggling to pay the New Zealand and the New Zealand Rugby League and RFL for the Denver Test. Well. This is it, you know, you pick a great big venue for playing a game at. It'll be exactly the same if Wigan and Catalan go over to New Camp. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to Dave. They should play in that little stadium next door to the New Camp. That's got a sort of 15, 10, 15,000 capacity. They might get a good crowd there, good crack. Got a, got a, a tweet from me with it. Me, me with, with me it. with it. Me with it. Okay, me with it. Okay. Is the League Leader Shield a waste of time? No, we need it. I don't think it is. We need it to needs be rewarded. Be made more worthwhile. I mean, do you think? I mean, we've got this top five playoff. Do you think that actually the team that um, finishes top should go straight to the grand final and, and the other yeah, four teams yeah, should play 100%. off for it? And you should get bigger. Oh, well, I'd, with in the media, we don't have a great idea, do we, of, of money. Of uh, how much money is in the sports, of what the TV deals are, etc. Well, we do now. We well, know. We, we know that well, they're getting yeah. forty million pound well, a yeah, season, we do. don't we? We do now after <laughs> after the report, the, after the meetings ahead of the EGM. But before that, we didn't. Um, and it, and if you compare it to football, and I, I, I don't like comparing the sport. Second sports. comparison this this but, uh, episode. When you compare it to football, all the football details are released. Mm -hmm. When a TV deal signed, you, you see that. The, the money and the figures, what it's worth, we don't know anything. But I, I, what, uh, the, I think the prize money should be more than £100,000 for winning League Leader Shield because it's the hardest competition to win. Out You've got to be three. really consistent, haven't you, to yeah. get the League Leader it's, Shield. It's the hardest competition to win out of the three. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, and it's the, it's the least um, treasurable, if, if, if you like. Um, and another question from me with it is, will Sean Edwards bring any union players with him? Only if they're willing to play for 15 <laughs> grand a year. I, honestly, I can't see any union players uh, coming. Unless Andy Powell makes a return. Uh, so, no. In answer to that, I'm with you. I don't think that he'll bring many union players with him. I, don't, I can't see it at all, Dave. At all. Not one. Right. That's just about us done and dusted for this week. Thanks for that. Uh, there was another question about the uh, Kiwi test at the end of the year. We'll have a bit more of a chat about that next week but thank you very much for joining us